Attention, please. And now, it's Cutter's Rock Ro- Rockcast. Hello. Hey. What's up, buddy? How you doing today? I'm all right, man. How are you doing today? Doing okay, thank you. Good. It's always a good day to talk about music, though. When isn't it? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, Mike Mushak. Man, it's good to see your face, and uh, I'm glad you're, uh, thank you for taking the time, truly. Oh, thank you. Appreciate the support, as always. Uh, you guys have been good to us since the very start, man. Always got to return the favor. Uh, Mike Mushak. I Obviously, we're talking Stained. Um, and, and Mike, of course, a guitar player in the band Santa Sonia as well. But um, it's been a long time for a new Stained song. A little, little, nerve, little nerve-wracking putting that out after all these years. I, mean, I don't care how big you are. It always feels like there's got to be some nerves in that. Um. I don't know. I was, I was just excited. I was real happy with the way the record turned out. So, I mean, I was, I'm just excited for everybody to, you know, if they want to hear the rest of it, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, no, it's, but yeah, listen, going into it, you know, not having, you know, work together or, you know, written music together in a long time. I mean, there, yeah, it's, you know, like, and, and listen, you think this with every record, but it's, you know, I feel like it especially has to be great since it's been, you know, such, such a, you know, bit of time has passed, you know? Well, by, by what Lois and me is doing, it seems like I think people are interested. That's, that's great to hear. I'm, I'm very happy for that. (laughs) So yeah, that's fantastic. So, I mean, it was what, 12 years ago, 13 years ago that Stain put out your self-titled album. Um, You toured a little bit and then it was kind of on the back burner, on the shelf for yeah. a while you did the other project with uh, adam and saint Sonia, and then Stain came back and you guys started playing shows again what was what what was it that brought you back to the touring world and then eventually leading to uh new music listen it was something that we always talked about doing you know it was just trying to find the right time um i mean i honestly i really think that there's you know there's a, a gentleman that used to play with aaron named you know ben kitterman that um really started you know helping manage Aaron's career and went from playing with him to that and Mm -hmm. he was really instrumental in kind of you know getting everything you know up and running again and so I mean I'm you know I'm thankful for that because it was something that I always I always wanted to do and I'm glad that you know we're we're back doing it and feel you know very fortunate that we are well and 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 also releasing a heavy song you know you, you guys have had those moments in your career, right? Where it started out as raw oh, and metal and, you know, whatever. Um, sure. And some guys back in, you know, the late nineties and it's, it's well, that. Listen, I mean, if anybody ever heard or listens to, you know, Tormented, which was our first thing that we did. Yeah, there you go. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, and we were playing with all these hardcore bands out of Boston and, you know, and it was just like uh, trying to be as heavy as you possibly could be. You know what I mean? Yeah. And honestly, it was really working with fred that that kind of had us take this you know left turn and listen i'm super thankful for because i mean it it really just pointed out i mean how great of a singer aaron is you know um and it, it reminded me of the first time that i ever heard him sing i mean he came down i was you know of course i was i was the, the stereotypical guitar player living in the parents basement yeah that, you know what i mean yep that's me poster child and, you know, I remember, I just remember him coming over and playing the song and hearing him sing. And it's like, after the second line, I was just like, oh my God, you know what I mean? This guy is such a great singer. And I used to go watch him play acoustically and yeah. And and that was something that Fred really pointed out. He's like, listen, man, this guy has got something that a lot of people, I mean, his voice is so good. You know what I mean? So I, I think that that's where we still kept, you know, that heavy element, but it was, you know, really, you know, relying on just how, how great of a voice that Aaron has and, you know, the great melodies and, you know, I mean, and the lyrics, you're right. I mean, I think it connects with, you know, with a lot of people. It connects with a ton of people. That's the one thing about Stained. I always remember, you know, whether we go back that far or we go back to even Lowest and me, you know, in the last couple of weeks is the lyrics and his voice is so haunting and and like, your guitar parts and his voice have always just done this flow oh, together. Man. That's kind of a magical moment. It feels. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, no, listen, I, I, yeah, I, I think he definitely 
makes what I, I do better. You know what I mean? And, uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm just, you know, happy for that, for that relationship. Uh, Lois to me again, you know, being the current single, you know, new stain record coming out this August, you guys going on the road and all that, of course. Um, is this a good representation of what the rest will sound like or, or, or are we going to get kind of all, all of the above. In, sure, as as sure. I, I think there's there's more of this sound than the, you know. Listen, there's a couple of of songs that I that you know, um, you know, kind of go to. You know, I think what we're actually really known for, like that. It's been a while. You know, outside type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but yeah, a lot of it has you know heavy and and there's 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 something there's an electronic element that there wasn't in any of our stuff before oh, interesting it's, it's, it's in this you know there's a couple of songs that have a little bit more of that now something that aaron you know aaron spoke of for a long time you know and wanted to do and uh i really think that you know uh, eric the producer was really helpful in and you know bringing that element to what we do you know because i remember even us you know preliminary talks of it i was like I don't know how to write a record like that. Cause that's not what I, you know what I mean? That's not what I do, you know? And I mean, it was something as simple as to, you know, taking the guitar riff that I wrote and playing it on a synthesizer, you know what I mean? Or, or mm. breaking it up and making some, you know, some cool sounds out of it. And, you know, so I'm really happy with the way that it turned out though. I mean, it was, it, it was definitely a little, um, yeah, I just wasn't sure, you know, uh, but as I heard it, I was like, Oh, I, I actually, I really liked it. That's interesting with the electronic element. I mean, knowing both of you, I mean, Aaron does all the acoustic stuff. Um, right. you, you can't strip it further down than what he does on his solo stuff. God, no, um, no, yeah. You've yeah. always been sort of that riff master, but um, okay. adding that electronic element is is definitely curious. Yo, well, listen, I mean, I can't wait for people to hear it because I really think, yeah. I really feel like it, it worked. You know what I mean? I feel like it's, you know, Stain 2023, I guess, if you will. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, it's it's kind of just a, a little more modern version, I think, of what, you know, what we've always done. Stain 2.0, the reboot. <laughs> totally, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're, uh, I, I want to get nerdy about guitar for a little bit. Um, okay. Because, you know, you, you mentioned the play, you know, typical guitar player play, playing in your parents' basement. Listen, man, I'm still in my basement. It's just happened to be my <laughs> basement. There you go. You know? um, I, I moved on up. I finished the attic in my house, and that's where I yes. am. So, you know what I, mean? <laughs> I didn't get that far. I don't make there's not a lot well, of money listen, in the radio. You're way smarter because I have freaking two flights of stairs to carry my, <laughs> my stuff up to get it. Oh, dude, right next to me is is uh is my orange setup, and I take this to gigs. Right. <laughs> My my stairs are just on the other side, right <laughs> out to the garage, yeah, back yeah. the jeep up, load it right. in, and go. Right, um, right. But uh, your guitar playing has always been a curious thing to me because you've used. There's been different tunings. There's been different chord structures that aren't normal. And I'm trying to figure out how to word this in a in a layman's way, but um, they aren't necessarily normal you know standard or drop D tuning of riffs. You've always incorporated such a interesting intricate style into what you do oh, thank you and i'm curious on where that comes from i don't i think just experimenting you know and honestly i think that i think it was something that aaron even kind of it pushed me into and just to kind of like thinking a little bit more about what i did and you know um like i remember you know we started at, i mean listen our first thing stained ever did was write three original songs together when we first got together in the fall of 94 and we said listen if we're going to do you know, if we want to play out in bars back then, or, you know, go play out, you, there wasn't a huge scene in Western mass for original music, you know? So we learned a bunch of cover songs that we liked and we went out and played those, but we always played originals and we were able to make that transition. Mm -hmm. But in that, you know, and Corn was one of our favorite bands that we would play. And he's Aaron's like, listen, listen to that low tune. And, you know, you need to. So I took one of my guitars and I added a low B string and, you know, I started, and I'm like, oh, well, there's drop D. And well, if I leave this, well, if I tune this down and then I try to get a chord, like, well, if I want this, maybe I tune this string like this. And so, yeah, hence there's like 23 tunings I think I've used over the years. I will tell you, since the last Stained record, though, I, I've i kind of settled on one that I, okay. I'm, I'm pretty much because it, 
it's a nightmare. I mean, going back with some of those songs and all those different, and listen, it's cool. And if I feel the need or write something, but there's always a different way to play things. You know what I mean? So I, I've kind of gotten away from that. And I kind of settled on one tuning on a seven string that I pretty much the seven string baritone that I pretty much use now. Okay. And I pretty much stuck with, you know, but yes, yeah. there was a lot going on back then that, you know, is made, you know, my, my guitar text life can be, can be difficult. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask like, how many different guitars do you have it, to well, have? It just means there's a lot stages. out on tour. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, that's why, like, even with Santa Sonia, I kind I mean, listen, there's, there's a couple of different tunings in Santa Sonia and some of that was some Adam stuff. Cause Adam would write some, uh, what I thought were great songs, you know, but I could go with a lot less guitar. You know what I mean? So it was, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Santa Sonia, you know, if you think about it right now, you personally, Mike, have two songs in the top 25 of the rock music chart with two different bands. It's kind of a cool, that's kind of a cool accomplishment. It's no Corey Taylor, but yes, it is a cool accomplishment. <laughs> <Nobody is. laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. Corey, Corey's a, you know, I mean, the, the king of, uh, the king of metal for sure. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. I mean, like I said, I, I just feel you know, between Aaron and Adam, two, you know, two of my favorite singers. So, yeah. yeah. As a guitar player, you lucked out. I mean, you know. I, for sure, totally. 100%. Yeah. Uh, Boston, you mentioned, you know, Boston and Massachusetts. Obviously, you guys and your old friends and Godsmack out on the road um, this summer. That's that's pretty cool to have two, uh, two bands that kind of came up at the same time from the same area out on yeah. the road. I'm sure you've known each other for a long time, obviously. We have. I mean, I, I think it was... Uh, it was a uh, local stage of warp tour in 98, I think was the first time oh, we played go. together. And uh, we were literally, um, we left right after that to record dysfunction. I mean, that was like, I think it was like the last gig we played. We, we, we played the day there, like in the afternoon, then we had a gig at night at our local bar and Godsmack came and played that with us. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And, and those guys just took off. I mean, with that first record, they were being played all the time on a huge station out here in Boston, WAF, when it was around. Yeah, and, rest in peace, AAF. Sorry, oh, Mr. Carey. Dude, I know. So, and so, and honestly, I'm actually, I'm actually part owner in a club restaurant. We used to promote like a lot of our shows, and now they're gone. And it's like, where do we promote rock shows? You know what well, I mean? Here's 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 bringing the whole world back together. The person who was running that station, who was brought out there to run that station when it went under, or when the company decided to put it to rest, is my old boss. So, um, who I worked for when I was, he gave me my first morning show gig, my first APD oh. gig. You know, one of wow. those deals, right? Um, and he was as devastated as anybody. I bet. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that was just a, I mean, for New England, I mean, that was the station, you know what yeah, I mean? 50 was, years, right? Something oh, like that. God, it was, yeah. And it was such a great station, you know? So yeah. 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 Either way. Um, it's too bad. To yeah. See so Godsmack. So yeah, we did that. We did a bunch of, tw love those guys. I can't wait to, can't wait to go play with them. I mean, they're just, uh, you know, Sully's so super talented. All those guys are, I mean, it's, it'll be great. Mm -hmm. You know and I big mean? venue and big venues too. I mean, these are big stages you guys are doing, and and as well you should be. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, get your tour dates, get your VIP, all that stuff at uh, on Stain's website. Listen, Mike, I know you got other of these to do. Um, you know, tell my buddy in Detroit to said hi next, and oh, uh, <laughs> you know my schedule better than me. Well, I saw it on the email chain, so I'm like, I oh. Well, yeah. Okay. So he's talking to Jackie. He's talking. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Like, oh, we're just, we're just talking every, to all I mean, the friends. Like, everybody. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. Sure. We could all just hang out at a table together and have some drinks and just do this. <laughs> I'm in. It'd actually be Good. fun. Right. Do that at some point. That just gave well, me. Listen, an idea. I feel like the like those Wimmer festivals, they have those, right? The media rooms where everybody is. And you just go nope. from one table to the other. That's how everybody got to know each other. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, listen, he definitely keeps metal alive, right? Those those shows he puts on are great. Yeah, they are. And obviously you guys are doing some of those too, but Yeah, for sure. Oh, Danny's they we're on his label. Oh god, that's right. That's his label. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. So, I mean, we've known so I talk about that 98. That was 97 what led us to getting signed was we went down to Florida when Fred was living in Jacksonville mm -hmm. and he had his garage converted to a rehearsal space. And we spent a week there with him 
right after Christmas. And we played a gig at Danny's club in Jacksonville called the milk bar, uh, new year's of 97. And, wow. uh, yeah. And that's when I first met Danny. So we've known him and he was actually our A and R guy when we were on Atlantic for, I think it was illusion of progress record. So okay. yeah, we go back a long way with him. He's, I mean, that guy's, he's fantastic, man. I love the story Danny. of Danny Wimmer is how many, how many bar owner promoters, that and that have dabbled in management or dabbled in industry stuff. Do you know that never amounted to anything? And Danny is just You're talking to one into this <laughs> name, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. <laughs> I think mine totally. lasted less than most, but still. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a credit to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got out. I booked Five Finger Death Punch once, and then went. Yeah, I'm good. Oh, oh right on. I'm just kidding. I love those guys, but no, the, the point is, is Danny took that in a whole nother level and brought the whole European idea of two of festivals to the did. United States and succeeded at it. Like God bless. That's amazing. Like more than succeed. Yeah, he's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One hundred percent. Well, hey man, good luck, and uh, let's do this again after the record comes out. Comes out in August. Um, in. Mike check of stain. Sounds great. Thank you, sir. I appreciate this for it. Cutters Rockcast. Don't forget to tune in. Exactly.